Welcome to Ice Cream Sunday. My name is Austin Buckner. David Richardson. Trevor Holder. And this episode's all about me. Fuck Yay. everybody else. <laughs> ah. As if we didn't need enough of this narcissistic. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, so this is uh, episode two of three when it comes to catching up everybody up on the last six years of our life. Um, and episode three of the current podcast. Yeah, let's go. Three. I was born on 3-3. Three, three. It all makes sense. It's all, it's coming, all coming together. together. Um, but we talk a little bit about uh, my, my fucking slowly improving uh, mental health. Uh, we talk about my children, talk about my uh, relationship. relationships. Um, <laughs> I like it. Yeah, we uh, like we it. go there. We go there, as the as the kids would say. Um, so this was this is uh, therapeutic for me to get a lot of things off my chest. So and it was also kind of a chance for us to, for, especially for me and you, to catch up because. Uh, yeah. Like we talk about in the podcast, our communication hasn't been as no, uh, strong I, as it I once was up until recently. Lived with this fucker for um, Trevor a good yeah a good portion of the last six years, so um, I was definitely in in more direct contact with him than I was with you. So it has been nice to kind of learn what has happened and, uh, and vice versa. what brought us back mm-hmm. to the Ice Cream Sunday podcast. Yes, sir. All right. So sit back, relax, and enjoy episode three of the Ice Cream Sunday Podcast. Peace. I don't know what I was thinking starting a podcast with a newborn. That was a that was a that was a dumb decision and led to only having 14, 14, 14, 14 15 episodes, episodes of the, uh, well, like the original podcast. Kind of like the squad cast. Yeah, so uh, about 15. 15. Yeah. Even though, have you ever gone back and listened to that? The squad cast? Yeah. It's very difficult to listen it to. It is very difficult to listen to. Uh, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of work, but it was a lot of fun. And like all I want, like my, all of my free time, I just wanted to spend with like my baby. So that got in the way. And then a year and a half later, I had a second baby, which would have made things infinitely more difficult. That and the fact that I I moved away from from Des Moines. Um, yeah, but Trevor and Corey, your guys' podcast, you guys weren't ever even in the same room, were you? See, Corey, no. Corey is Not once. Uh, Corey yeah. is is. Uh, he knows a lot more about the tech than I do. Mm. That's where I kind of need everyone in the same room or one person on a phone that I can plug into, like, the computer or the mixer or whatever. Hopefully, hopefully everything sounds great on the the new show. Um, I'm trying really hard not to rub my hands together. It's okay. No, it's okay. I just – the point I'm trying to make is that um, – I hope it sounds good to cover up that I'm actually a dipshit and I don't really know what I'm doing when it comes to like editing a podcast. I just I just guess. The only reason that I know anything about the audio stuff is because I went to school for broadcasting. I have a minor in broadcasting, but so I, I took like the little bit of knowledge that I had and then Googled a bunch of shit about podcasting. But six years ago, all I did, I, I just wanted to talk shit about my coworkers. <laughs> that's it I mean and wrestling I just wanted to talk you about you want to talk about shit about yeah, co-workers yeah, I want talk to about talk, wrestling want some to talk video about, games some movies a little bit of yeah a little bit of video games a little bit of uh, movies a lot of talking shit about co-workers a lot of talking shit about uh, girls that I had hooked up with a lot of talking shit about girls that I had hooked up with from work yeah my 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 penis got brought up on every every episode all 14 yeah, and then the one that it wasn't going to bring, get brought up, you mentioned something about it, and then I think Roy was on it, and he was like... It was so, Roy or Zach. Yeah, and yeah. yells something about your dick. Yeah. So, Kingston was born before we ended the last podcast, though, wasn't he? Right. So, we started Ice Cream Sunday and recorded... We recorded the first batch of episodes, and then he was born, like, right after that first batch of episodes, mm-hmm. where... Uh, were recorded so it just made things difficult because it just cut into a lot of my free time 
not so much recording because uh, the nice thing is we all had like the same weird weekday off for whatever yeah, reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, it did cut into like editing and uh, promoting, marketing the show, which was difficult in and of itself because in 2016, no one seemed to know what a podcast was like at all. Uh, that was a, that was always the first question. You tell people you have a podcast and they have to ask, you know, what is a podcast? What do you guys do? I feel like, though, that some of our uh, regular listeners, like uh, uh, Andy, or uh, one of my friends that worked at Papa John's and mm-hmm. was working at uh, Jimmy John's at the time, I mean, he would go and put business cards up for us, and we didn't even ask him to. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was the really cool thing, is that the we didn't have a, a lot of listeners, and I think that what... What my vision for the podcast now, six years later, is is to try to kind of appeal to everyone. Have a little bit of like, like we've got a lot of really cool people that we're bringing on. Not, mm-hmm. and then I, I think people will listen just for our stories as well. But it's cool to have people on that are from the cosplay world. Um, someone that does a little bit of blacksmith. Someone that everyone can relate to with uh, online dating and entrepreneurism and a lot of different traveling. topics. Yeah, pro wrestling, traveling. Morgan as a cervical cancer survivor. I think we have a lot of topics that will will, you know, maybe maybe people tune in and they listen to Morgan's podcast because, you know, they know Morgan and they know her story and they want to learn more about it or they know someone that's um, you know, survived cancer or or God forbid not survive cancer and they, they want to know a little bit more, you know, behind the scenes and what they go through. Um, they might listen to Zach's podcast because, you know, they're, they want to live vicariously through him kind of mm-hmm. like we do. Um, cause we don't get to, you know, I personally don't get to travel that much. So it's cool to, to know someone that, that does that. So, and, and he does it on a more extreme level than we yeah, ever oh, yeah, do. Absolutely. And so I, I like the idea that we have a little bit for everyone and, and maybe, People won't listen to every single episode, but I want to provide, you know, at least one episode that appeals to to everybody. So that's that's kind of the goal that I have with this podcast. And and it's it's easier to do now because I think six years later, well, I mean, one particular podcast has, you know, 200, 250 million listeners a week. People know what podcasts are now, where mm-hmm. six years ago they they were like, well, you're doing, you're doing what? What is that? You upload is, a that like, is that like the radio? Yeah. yeah. You do like and a, I don't like that. I don't like talk radio. Yeah, that exactly. Was, that yep. was the best way I, I pitched it to people too. It's like podcasts are essentially just internet radio. That's yeah. Like what it is. Yeah. And, and with it being a more widespread thing than it was back then, I think it'll also bring forth just more random people. I hope so. That are just like, look like, cause like when I, a lot of the podcasts that I used to listen to, uh, have moved on to different networks and taken down like yeah. their episodes that were on like Stitcher. So when I get like a wild hair up my ass, like I was wanting to listen to stuff about cryptids. Uh, I never did actually yeah. find anything worth a damn, but I did go searching through and like, oh, this talks about that. So let's check this one out. And let's, oh, this one talks about that. Let's check this one out. So maybe somebody's just looking for something like, let's say, what say you or good or uh, ear biscuits or something like that, where it is just more of a, a random mishmash of everything. Uh, they'll see ours and be like, oh, okay. yeah, they do that. And they do a more structured thing where they interview people. So, um, your Let's sons see. are born a, a year between each other? A uh, year and a half. Yep. Huh. So Kingston's born March of 2016. Um, it, it, what's funny is that both my biological children and then the one that I consider my uh, my third son would all be born on the 29th if it didn't take a day and a half for Kingston to be born. Hmm. So he was – we went in on the 29th for uh, dilation. Yeah. And then – I almost said incubation, <laughs> but no. Uh, that for, was what he was doing for the yeah. nine months before that. So um, he would have been born on the 29th of March, and then Kenta was born on uh, the 29th of October, and then Carrick, who I'm sure we'll get to later, uh, was born on the 29th of July. But uh, Kingston screwed all that up with uh, taking 36 hours to <laughs> – to be born so i remember shortly after kingston being born i ran into you at jordan creek mall because you guys were going to see santa oh yeah and i got the most perfect picture somewhere where oh where he looks drunk he looks drunk as shit (laughs) yeah it's incredible and our like 
Christmas sweaters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a good day. That was a good day. Um, yeah, and then Kenta was born October 29th of 2017, so about a year and a half, year and seven months later. And that one was – so I, we, we sort of skated through Kingston's birth. I mean, it was super easy other than, like, she was in labor forever. But then once they switched over and decided that she's not going to be able to deliver this baby naturally and we did a C-section – she was healthy. Uh, my ex-wife was healthy. Uh, Kingston was healthy. Um, and we we came home two days, two days after he was uh, delivered on funny. WrestleMania. Um, yeah. Which is fitting. Um, yeah, it was, I mean, it was, it was easy. And then when Kenta was born, it was a scheduled C-section, and then he, her water broke uh, two weeks before the scheduled C-section, rushed to the hospital. He was born. Uh, uh, born, born, stillborn, uh, was resuscitated, um, and then had a ton of medical issues because of that. Still has issues with his, his lungs. He was in the NICU for, for 10 days on oxygen. And, uh, so he was a problem child for sure. He has been a problem child <laughs> since day <laughs> one. He's that kid's a little nightmare. Um, I love him, but yeah, he is. He's a little nightmare. Um, but yeah, I spent time in the NICU. It was very fortunate because any time that your your child has to spend any time in the uh, neonatal um, intensive care unit, um, it's it's scary. But we were there for you know we were there for a week and a half, and there were parents that had been there for months. Mm -hmm. um, and there are some. There are some incredible successes when you meet a parent whose child has been in there for months and then they get to go home and it's just, it's the best thing to see. Um, and then on the other end of things, you, you see parents that have been in there for a couple of weeks and then, you know, unfortunately they don't, they don't get to bring their child home. Um, so that was, uh, fuck, that, that sucked. That was tough. Sure. Um, and now he's, um, you know, now he's an asshole. So, uh, he, um, he had to learn after somebody. Yeah. We fucking, we loved him. And, uh, he's the one that he's the only one of the three children that, uh, Kaylee has that we planned for. And he's the, he's the one that we, we, we said we wanted. And, and now he's, uh, now he's an asshole. So, so what you're telling me is don't plan to have kids. I'm no, don't, no, no, just, just fucking, yeah, just fucking wing it. Cause, uh, once you, when you plan it, then, then, uh, I think there's a, I feel like somehow when, when, um, they are, they are in the oven, so to speak, I, I think they can hear you like a, like a fucking walkie talkie or an Amazon Alexa. Um, they're listening all the time. And then they have this little, uh, I feel like they have like a little cockiness about them when they're born. They're like, yeah, you wanted me. <laughs> I'm the one you plan for no, and I'm going to make you regret it. <laughs> but he's, he's an awesome kid. It's, it's so, um, just, it's, it's so weird and, and, and it's, it's hard to explain because like Kingston is, is half me, half Kaylee and Kenta is half me, half Kaylee. And they could not be any more different. And it's just fun watching like, two kids that grow up in the same house. They spend every waking minute of each other biologically very similar. And they are just two completely different children. Um, and I, I don't understand, uh, any of that. Cause I'm not smart enough to understand Life how like so little personalities, like uh, you know, how a personality develops, but they are Kingston is very quiet, laid back. He loves to like dance and he loves to have fun, but, um, he's very, he kind of takes his time to to talk and uh, really kind of think things out. And then there's Kenta, who's just a bull to the yeah, wall. he's just a bulldozer in everything he does. The way he talks, the way he acts, he he does not like to sit down for very long. Kingston will sit in the same spot all day if you let him. Just two completely completely different kids. And then um, I'm definitely skipping ahead years, but. Kaylee got pregnant by another half Laotian, half white boy. Um, I think that might have been by design. Um, <laughs> and uh, had a third child. And um, that 
biological father of Carrick, her third child, um, wasn't around. And so I've, I've sort of taken on the responsibility of raising a, a third child with my, my ex-wife who, uh, got, got pregnant, didn't have that child until long after we had, uh, we had split and, um, that we hated each other, hated each other. And then she has a kid and all of a sudden that's, that's my third, that's my third son in a way. And it, uh, somehow her having another child kind of, kind of brought us closer together. So I know that's like super weird to be the father of a child that's not yours, but yeah. still try to retain a relationship with like the mother. Uh, that's kind of something I personally know a bit about, but like you, you talk about separating from Kaylee and, uh, I know I was kind of around for that, and that kind of came to a head when uh, you guys broke up, and there was some some issues along with that. You want to go uh, on about that? I mean, that? there were issues from the from the right. day we met. Sure, um, sure. I, so, well, I remember a lot on the last podcast that we did back when the, the original version of Iris Ice Cream Sunday. Uh, you actually talked in an episode about getting ready to leave her. Yeah. And then that never happened. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess it eventually happened. It's not happened not the way that I anticipated it, but it, near that it happened. Um, so end of 2014, um, I was living in Nebraska, um, and my first fiance, my first of three, because I'm fucking bad at engagement. Um, yeah, but you don't want people to think you're like you can't commit so well, you know you gotta try to <laughs> and it was girls i had dated for like years and years too so it wasn't like i was just jumping into engagement neither here nor there sure so um lives in nebraska my fiance at the time lost her job we were working at the same place so she gets fired which makes my job very awkward and i just decided to quit i moved to des moines looking for employment and was still going to date her and we were just going to do like a long distance thing um until Either she could find a job here in Des Moines or I would eventually move back if I found a job in like the Lincoln, Nebraska area where her family's from. That was the original plan before I left. Then I moved to Des Moines and we broke up literally a week later. I spent the first six months sort of in and out of relationships, screwing up a relationship with a girl that would have been really great for me. Uh, Let's call her S. I like yeah. how how we're actually trying not to tell people's names. This uh, time around. I will t I will tell names. I just won't. I won't. I won't say hers. I have. I have. Uh, I have too much respect for this one particular person to say her name. The other ones can go fuck themselves, and I'll 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 talk shit. That's the one person that like like I wish that we could maintain a friendship because she's super cool and would have been. Uh, much like Zach talks about on an episode that you guys will hear in a few weeks, like he talks about screwing things up with Angela. I don't would would never want to date this particular person again, but like I, I do feel bad that like I it ended the way it did. I I feel bad that it will. I met her before I was in therapy and started medication, mm -hmm. and I got you. Um, if I'm being completely honest, made her life uh, living hell for like six months. So um, so the, on and off with that relationship. We break up, she moves out of the apartment, and because I am living alone in a really nice new apartment, it's um, pretty easy to convince girls to just like come hang out and hook up. Cause I'm like, look, I have this like two bedroom apartment, this fuck den, and uh, let's just uh, let's just all hang out. And um, one of them was Kaylee. We hooked up a few times. I think she, cause I was not great at communicating back then. Um, I think she thought that it was more than it was. I had completely cut off communication and she had continued to um, message me and um, um, try to foster something bigger than what I wanted. Um, and then we just stopped talking. Mm -hmm. And then it was probably a month or two where we just did not talk at all. I came home from my first wrestling match because uh, I was still wrestling at that point, had been training all the way through like that relationship and and all of the 
one night stands that I'd had and then finally got my first match, came home and uh, found out that she was pregnant over the phone. So I went from like the highest of highs to at that point, the lowest of lows, because I, I think everyone that knows me knew that I, I did not want to be a father at all. Well, you didn't have the best father. Figure. No, 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 not at all. And so, um, I just, I did not want the responsibility. I didn't want to, I wanted to be Peter Pan. Like I never wanted to grow up. I didn't want that responsibility. I didn't want to mature. I didn't think there was anything wrong with me. Um, so when I found out she was pregnant, it was like completely just like, I don't know how to explain it. It just, it didn't, didn't change me. Um, like it probably should have, but I just got very like depressed, uh, a little angry. Um, and like an asshole kind of blamed her for everything. Cause she was, she was like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm on birth control and I can't get pregnant. And I was like, perfect. Yeah. Sounds great. Um, and then she can't get pregnant surprise. So, um, because of the really, really bad upbringing that I had and not knowing my father, I wanted to be the exact opposite. And her and I were not, uh, not good for each other, uh, from day one. I think we both knew that, but we both wanted to do the right thing. Cause we both had really shitty upbringings with parents that weren't really around. And we were going to kind of break that generational trauma or that cycle of having shitty parents. And, um, you just don't want your kid growing up in a broken home. Correct. Yeah. Um, I didn't want my, my kid to be the one that doesn't know his father and then meets him at 17 and regrets ever meeting him. Like I did with my, um, my father and Kaylee's Kaylee's biological father was never around. And we just, we wanted to, we wanted to be better than, than, uh, what we were given. We wanted to provide more than what we were, we were provided. So, yeah. So we raised Kingston, we move, we buy a house, we decide we want another kid. We, uh, get married cause that's the right thing to do when you have two kids. And, uh, and then we get separated pretty quickly after that. So we get married in May of 2017 and we're separated by January of, uh, of 2018. Um, not even a whole year, not even a whole year. No. And I, I think, I think looking back, both of us kind of knew that it wasn't going to last. Um, both of us, I think agree that it was probably a, a poor decision to have a second child. Uh, I don't regret it at all. My kids are awesome. I don't really regret being married either. Um, I think the separation really matured me. So yeah, I, if nothing, that's a big learning experience. Yeah. Too, yeah. Like, if there was nothing good that came out of being married, but a lot of life lessons learned from, uh, the separation, the divorce. So chronologically, uh, January, 2018, we're separated. Um, she moved, moves back to Des Moines with the boys. This house that we had bought is just in my name, of course, but we were, we, you know, when you're married, you're together, you pay bills, uh, together. I can't afford this house by myself. So I move this girl in that has, uh, four children, um, by four different baby daddies because I can't read red flags at all. So she moves in that goes awful and I fuck up and ignore a no contact order to get in contact with, uh, Kaylee and decide that we're going to try to make it work again. Um, and it did for a couple months and then a verbal argument turns into me being arrested while I'm sleeping. So I was working with you. I was working at come and go at the time, came home from work late. Um, it was one of my, like, um, well, not store and over closes, but it's like a, like an afternoon, like two to 10 shift. Yeah. So I get home late. Um, kids are already in bed. I think that I stayed around and helped, um, the overnight person, you know, finish up some of my tasks that I couldn't get done. Whatever. I got home late is the moral of the story. If that's, I remember right, this was on a Friday too. And the only reason this why was I'm, on a Saturday night. That's right. Yeah. Yep. Saturday night. So, um, I get home, big argument. Yeah. Just a big verbal argument about like, why are you home? You're cheating on me. You were out, you know, fucking around with somebody else. And, um, like, I'm not 
I'm not having this conversation. Like we have this conversation all the time. It's never true. Um, and I'm just done arguing about it. I'm not going to argue and, and defend myself against like allegations of cheating because they've just, they've never happened. And it just got old to, to defend yourself against like allegations that have never happened over and over and over when all you want to do is just like make it work because if you can't make it work, then you don't get to see your kids because that's, that's the way the world works, unfortunately. I remember that night specifically because I was hanging out with a mutual friend of ours mm -hmm. at the time. And we had just gotten to downtown Des Moines. We were walking around and whatnot. And you got a hold of me because you messaged me and was yeah. like, hey, I'm getting arrested. Yep. yep. And then... Because I knew... Because my... My ex-wife and her mother do not, um, they don't bluff like at all. Um, so when they say that like you're getting arrested, it means you're getting arrested and they have already called the cops. So we get in this argument. Um, her mother lives right downstairs, directly below us. Um, she takes the kids downstairs, Kingston and Kenta. Kenta is a baby. Like he's six months old at this point. The cops show up. And the story that they were told downstairs by Kaylee and her mother is that Kaylee lives with her mom and the upstairs apartment that I was in at the time was mine and that I had rented out that apartment and broke the no contact order by living in the same building without letting them know. Um, and that I had tried to like force my way into the downstairs apartment. Um, so the saving grace for me was that when they got there, they saw... Kenta sleeping in a baby carrier. They saw Kingston sleeping on the couch using a towel as a blanket um, and only one adult bed. So clearly they were not living there full time. They go upstairs. They talk to me. They see all of Kaylee's clothes hanging in the closet. They see a crib. They see all of these things that like, why would I have that if I have a no contact order that says that I can't see my, you know, my right. children? Why would I still have all of her clothes? Um, but at the end of the day, I did. We did not have the no contact order rescinded. And so technically I did break the law um, by living with her in her apartment so i get arrested yeah. it's funny when you did get arrested though because you you told me later on that like the same story and the cop goes look i know yeah he was like i know that you guys are living together it's very obvious but you're not supposed to be living together there is a no contact order um, it, and he was super cool about it from yeah, what he was told super me. nice he, he, still arrested i me. i hate to, yeah the guy that arrested me i hate super to nice. do i hate to do it because you're clearly getting screwed over here. Yeah, he told me um, inside the apartment, he said, I have to put handcuffs on you for appearances. That's like his quote. Um, because when you walk down the stairs, her apartment's right there. And so he's like, I have to put you on, in handcuffs. And then once we got to the car, I was out of handcuffs. Uh, but then again was put in handcuffs because everyone that gets put in the paddy wagon is uh, put in handcuffs. Yeah, so I was in cuffs for hours. Yeah, and then I never heard from you for like two days. Yeah, so um, I don't know if you've ever been arrested, but they take your phone and all of your clothes um, and they put them in like a little, like a vacuum mm -hmm. baggie kind clear of thing. Baggie. Yeah, clear baggie. Um, you get to wear clothes that do not fit you. Um, and then it was a Saturday night. So the busiest night of the week, um, and we're all in uh, one, I call it a holding tank. I don't know what they actually call it, but it's all just one big room, um, and we all have, like, no pillow, yeah, a blanket. A yeah, a blanket with, like, holes in it, um, and there's no room for anyone. Uh, this was at, like, 2 in the morning, 3 in the morning, when I got arrested, and I didn't get to the actual jail um, and processed until like six in the morning. Mm -hmm. And then my, my grandmother, uh, bless her heart, bails me out of jail. Um, somehow comes up with $5,000 cash on a, uh, on a Sunday, which she must be balling, um, <laughs> with fat stacks in a safe somewhere. Cause I don't know how she came up with 
five thousand dollars on a Sunday, but um, I get billed out, and um, then there is a court hearing, and and basically how, and I don't know if this is true or not, but basically how it was explained to me um, was I broke a no contact order, and you get, you could get thirty days in jail for every instance of breaking the no contact order. So I was living with her for two months, which was 60 days. So I could have got 30 times 60, whatever that comes out to. I'm fucking terrible at math. So th whatever 30 times 60 is, is how long I could have a maximum sentence stayed in Des Moines County Jail. And then she failed to appear at court. Um, case was dismissed. And then was that um, the uh, that was the one that I went to you with? Yeah, yeah. So 1800, by the way. So 1800 days um, divided by uh, three 365 years. days. A little over five years. Just under five. Yeah. So great. So um, yeah, she doesn't show up uh, to court. Didn't it's, her mom show up dismissed. though? Yeah. So her mom shows up to court. Um, is like, he smacked me. I never saw her that night at all. But yeah, so Kaylee come or Kaylee does not come. Her mom comes. Her mom makes a fool out of herself. It was basically a, called her an idiot, didn't he? Yeah, it was like you're not part of this at all. Like you didn't file, you know, anything. This was this is between him and her, and um, you have nothing to do with this. I don't know why you're here. Like, but yeah, so I I, I get arrested, and uh, the then I have the court hearing. The that morning I have the court hearing. That night, I I meet up with Tessa for the first time. So li like the same day that I could have spent the next five years in jail, I start a new <laughs> start a new relationship. And Tessa was a short girl. Uh, yeah. yeah. So funny story about that. Go on. I saw her the other day. I'm sure you did. I was at uh, Walmart in West Des Moines. Mm -hmm. She's gained about fifty pounds. Yep. And she recognized me. So she but, was she was like the smallest she was when when I dated her. Mm -hmm. She's always been like a, a bigger girl and her weight's always fluctuated. That's always been like a big thing with her. But yeah, she's I mean She recognized me but didn't know how she recognized yeah. me. You could see it all over her face. Yeah. So she keeps like glancing back at me, but like this. Trying to figure it all out. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm just sitting there laughing. <laughs> So we date for a few months. Um, she's got two kids who I adored at the time. Um, and I think a lot of that had to do with like not having my own kids. So mm -hmm. I kind of projected like, I'm your dad now, like onto them. Cause I can't, wow. you know, you can't, I can't see your own kids. So. Yeah. So that, um, that made things difficult. And then we went to the, we went to the state fair one night and we got home and she was like, I have something to tell you. And then I found out that she, uh, don't ever, if you're in a relationship, like stay away from pro wrestling because pro wrestlers will fuck your girlfriend. It's just a, uh, it's a rite of passage. And oh, what? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, she basically told me that she'd been, been hooking up with, uh, her, her cocaine dealer who happened to be a professional wrestler. Um, so there's a couple of red flags there. A, I don't do cocaine and, uh, B, I don't want, uh, other guys fucking my girlfriend. So that relationship ended pretty quickly single for like a month, two months. And then I meet Esmeralda. And when I, Yikes. yeah. So when I started dating Esmeralda, I realized how small Des Moines really was because she was mutual friend. She was friends with someone who knew Tessa and then all of that got wrapped up. So every party that I went to while dating Esmeralda, Tessa was there and it was just a, it was a whole thing. That relationship was a nightmare. She was a lot younger, was still kind of in her like party phase, mm -hmm. which I had, I was out of, I, I, I had, kind of grown out of that before I even turned uh, a legal age to drink. I was just over all of it. Um, more of a cocktail lounge guy than a nightclub guy is what I always say. Um, she was very much a nightclub girl. So a lot of, much like Tessa, I mean, a lot of, a lot of drugs, a lot of alcohol, a lot of sex, and uh, not a whole lot of structure. I think because of all your incidents with Kaylee, uh, that you just kind of like from an outside perspective, just gravitated towards red flags. 
to bed. Yeah, I girl. think so. And, I think that I tried to do like the like I tried to be a father and I tried to be a husband and I tried to do all of that, um, and it didn't work. So the the following relationships, like the rest of 2018, I just ran through like three or four relationships, boom, 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 that were all like, they don't want any more kids. They don't want any more structure. Tessa had kids, but like, right. they were never really, I mean, a few times I, I visited them or saw them, but really they weren't in the picture. And then when we broke up, they weren't in the picture at all. And I won't get into all of the details of that, but she didn't have her kids for very much longer after we broke up. But then, like, that whole whole relationship with Esmeralda was uh, a nightmare. But she was um, – the nice, the thing – what was nice is she's a few years younger than me, which is, uh, depending on personalities, can be um, an entire – seem like an entire generation, uh, generational gap. And so she is of an, an age group that I think doesn't have the same kind of stigma with uh, – uh, mental health medication and therapy that like elder millennials like we have. And so the one great thing about dating her was that I started therapy, which led me to, to leave wrestling. Cause like the first thing about therapy was like, Hey, get rid of all of your, get rid of all of your toxins, everything that's, uh, that's, that's poisoning your life. That's not, uh, that's not adding any, value. any value to it. And I was like, great. And I quit wrestling like the, like, that's got to be hard, though. I mean, for someone like you who's so, like, I don't know, ingrained with wrestling, like, oh, that that had to have been a blow because... Not as much as you'd think because I have never loved wrestling more as a fan than when I quit wrestling as a performer. Like, once you step away and you and you get away from, like wrestlers as people and you're just like oh wrestlers are just superheroes like if i worked on a marvel movie and i saw fucking chris hemsworth and like you know it was cgi all over his his body and shit you know what i mean like the and um doing stunts and i got to see like the backstage stuff i'd be like oh these are just dudes these are just dudes doing stunts and like that's not really you know sure the fucking god of thunder it's just a dude that's how I felt about pro wrestling. I was like, these dudes are larger than life. They're real life superheroes. They do backflips and they don't get hurt. Um, and then you see the backstage sizes of stuff and they're like, oh, it's just frat dudes, like athletic frat dudes um, that do backflips off the top rope sometimes. And once I got away from that world, then I could like, I could kind of put myself back into, oh, these are superheroes. Like these are larger than life guys. So the, the more I got away from that world, the more that I loved pro wrestling as a fan. And I, I was a fan before I was a performer. And so to be able to, to love wrestling again, yeah, I have no regrets of leaving that, that world behind for good. Cause had now I get to watch it again with it off and on during your whole relationship with it. Anyway, it was, um, I think it was just the, the company that I worked for. Cause I've been in other locker rooms, like just visiting because I wrestled for a little bit. And so I know still know people that will allow me to like go backstage. And, um, I think I don't want to talk too much shit about three X wrestling, but we uh, which we always do, but we, we already did a whole podcast. Yeah. About that. Um, I mean, it's gone now, but I, uh, I, I definitely think it's where I, I chose to train and where I, I chose to, uh, to work. Cause there is a lot of, there's a lot of locker rooms that aren't like that. Um, and a lot of management teams that, uh, are better organized. Let's just put it that way. Um, so yeah, it, it really wasn't a big thing. Um, leaving wrestling behind, I don't really regret it. I miss training more than I miss performing. I miss like learning new moves and stuff like that. But I don't, I don't miss, I don't miss getting there the night before and setting up a wrestling ring and then being exhausted and then working, you know, your eight hour day job and then getting off and, uh, and wrestling and, and putting your, putting your body through hell for, uh, you know, 
a hot dog and maybe three dollars if you're lucky, you know. But you did end up with the photo of Bernie Sanders with you. But I did headlock. end up with the photo, the photo of Bernie Sanders. That was a uh, and that, that came and that's, for a bit. Th- that was like international. Yeah, that was. I was the the top post on Reddit for like a day and a half. So that's like that's the most famous I've ever been. But yeah, so I quit wrestling, started therapy. Esmeralda and I broke up, and I did the same thing that I always do when um, when I'm single, uh, and I can't afford to live by myself, and that's to run back to Kaylee. So we got together again as as friends, as uh, as roommates. We were not romantically involved at all, but it was like you should start seeing your kids again, and the best way to do that is to live with them, and so yeah. Her and I lived together. Everything was fine, like it always is for the first few months, and then things went horribly. I have a fun little mental breakdown, which uh, causes me to attempt suicide, which causes me to start medication on top of therapy, which if you're ever in a fucking terrible spot, I would recommend both because they definitely go hand in hand. Um I always say it's like exercise and diet. Like you can't, you can't really get the results that you're looking for without both. And you can't really get the results that you're probably wanting or hoping for without therapy and, uh, and medication. That's my, that's my two cents on, on everything. But, uh, sure. so I start medication on a Friday, try to kill myself on a Friday, um, start medication get to go home on a Monday. Um, no, sorry. Get to go home on a Sunday and, um, right away get in a huge argument, um, with Kaylee about a number of different things. And she decides that she wants me out of her apartment. So and you're not on the lease. I am not. So Super Bowl Sunday, 2019, I call up a friend of mine and I say, hey, I know that you live in a studio apartment, um, but you have a futon. Do you care if I come sleep on your futon? Um, and that is how an already incredible friendship uh, turned into a friendship that fucking saved my life because I moved in with Trevor. And, and then the whole thing about that was not that it matters a whole lot, but I already knew you were in a bad spot. And I, I had been for a while. <laughs> right. But rather than to the point where you asked if you could stay, uh, this was probably around the time that you got arrested. I'm like, man, if you need a place to stay and like, it's not much, I'm not expecting a lot. Like, y- please, like you can, st- you can stay at my place. So the thing about my support system, um, and the close friends that I have, like, you showed up to court, like you uh, offered me a place to stay. Um, I am, how do I say this without talking shit about myself, which I'm really good at. Um, I I have an ego um, that uh, doesn't allow me to to accept things from other people very well it's pride yeah so um you know when you're in your i was in my late 20s at the time 29 almost 30 um the last thing i wanted to do was accept a handout and fucking move in with a roommate um when i'm almost 30 years old and should have my shit together and should you know i should fucking own a house and i should you know i should have a wife and i should have kids and that's what i tried to do and it didn't work and so The last thing I wanted to do was, you know, move in with someone else or accept uh, generosity from other people. Gladly, I did. And I'm sure we'll talk about this more. Yeah, I'm sure we'll talk about this more next week um, because I'm sure Heather will say the same thing. And I don't want to tell her story or your story too much. But uh, you have a you have a way of without kissing your ass too much. You have a way of pulling people out of really shitty situations and then making them see more of uh, more more of the good about themselves than they they would on their own. And so I say this all the time: like, had I not moved in with you, like I I don't know I don't know what I would have done 
because that led to that led to all the good things. Because then I I had been while well, living with Kaylee, even though there was the the arrangement, the agreement that like we're not romantically involved. You can date who you want to date. I can date who I want to date. Had I started dating someone, it would have caused massive problems. Um, and that's part of the reason that she wanted to kick me out anyway, because um, I had secretly been talking to Amy um, at the time. And Amy called me one afternoon freaking out. She got in a car accident on the way back pretty serious car accident on the way back from Des Moines to Pella. I was one of the first people that she called. I took that phone call right in front of Kaylee and it caused a world of issues. Thank God it did. Um, cause I wouldn't be where I'm at today, but, uh, yeah. took that phone call in front of Kaylee caused a bunch of issues. Uh, like a month later got kicked out, started living with you. And, uh, the nice thing is you don't have any like weird homoerotic, uh, energy toward me where you're going to get jealous if I start talking to girls. So <laughs> I could, um, you know, he did well, that he, he knew of. I <laughs> didn't, I didn't know about it. So that was the nice <laughs> thing is that being able to live with you, I was able to like actually focus on that relationship and not try to hide it. So yeah, March of, uh, I had been living there for quite a while and that was like my first place on my own. And, you know, after some time spent after stuff that we'll probably get into uh, on my episode, mm -hmm. uh, it was nearing the end. And so when I offered the place up to you, I had kind of sort of pitched the idea that like, Hey, when this lease is up, let's actually look for a decent apartment together. That's not one big room. Right. Yeah. And it, thankfully it worked out. It yeah. got us where we are. That worked out great. Was able to focus on, was able to fo focus on work and able to focus on, um, making, making that sweet, sweet cheddar. That um, gosh. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, fostering this incredible relationship with this like really great woman that um i think this is a tangent but i i feel like a lot of people will will date you and they'll be like you got to get your shit together um but if you don't quickly huh. i'm gonna fucking leave you and the beautiful thing about amy was she was like you need to get your shit together but if you don't I'm, I'm going to help you around. get your shit together. I'm going to stick around until you do it. Yeah. Um, which I take a lot of time to get my shit together. And I still probably don't have it, but I'm which, in a much better position than I was three years ago. I mean, if, if three we're being ago. honest, like that whole time, absolutely out of your league for someone, <laughs> for someone that. Buddy, we've been together three years and she's still out of my uh, league. Yeah. No, it's, just, it's like you said, it, that's crazy though. Like a lot of people wouldn't have that patience or time or yeah. care to invest all of that into someone who isn't anywhere in life. And that's not like a disparaging against oh, you. Oh, no, anything, I was, but like, I was nothing. I had accomplished nothing. Yeah. And but for whatever reason, she found, uh, she saw something in me that was like, oh yeah, you could be more than what you are right now. And that's, that's weird. Cause I've always said like, don't date potential. Like, yeah. don't waste your fucking time on people that could be great. Like if they don't have their shit together, like it's not your, it's not your responsibility to fix anyone. And I say that and I'm a huge hypocrite because it wasn't her responsibility to fix me either, but she did. And I'm much better off for it. Yeah. Completely different person than I was, especially six years ago. I mean, we're talking about like the past six years. Yeah. Definitely a better person than I was six years ago. A much better person than I was four years ago. I mean, 2018 was the worst year of my life with getting separated and dating a bunch of girls that I shouldn't have been dating. And then in the middle of it, I, I met her and, uh, we kicked it off and she found me awkward and off putting because I'm awkward and off putting. And, uh, there's a certain charm to it. Yeah. But she was, she was, 
dating someone else at the time and I was dating Tessa at the time and we sort of fell out of communication and then there were a couple girls in between I remember because we'd have conversations about that too yep there <laughs> sure were uh yeah 2018 was uh Boy, it was a great year for stats, but it was not a great year. It was not, <laughs> it was not a great year for uh, for my my mental or emotional. It's just a great oh. year for putting up numbers. Oh, buddy, uh, let me tell you. Um, but we kind of fell out of communication for six months because I was dating other people and she was dating who she was dating at the time. And Lauren is my my fiance's childhood best friend. And Lauren is an attractive woman and an attractive woman added me on Instagram. And so of course me being me in 2018 was like, yeah, I was like, who the fuck are you? Where did you come from? Um, would you like to get to know me? And then she was like, oh, I'm Amy's friend. Um, and I of <laughs> course was like, oh yeah, I haven't talked to her for a while. I don't think she likes me. And then Lauren was basically like, I think you'd be surprised. Um, and then sent me these screenshots of the night we met six months earlier where she was like, hey, I met this guy. He's really, really nice to me. Um, has basically tried to convince me that like, um, you know, I could do a lot better than the guy that I'm dating right now. I truly believe that. Like she is an incredible person. And from everything that she told me and the mutual friend that we were uh, hanging out with who she had um, – had some romantic feelings for prior. Uh, she could just do a lot better than the the guys that she was dating and the guys that she was settling for. And fast forward six months, we start talking, start hanging out again. And uh, the, everything that I said to her about like not settling got through to her because she was like, great, if you truly believe that, then I'm not settling for you either. And you need to get your shit together. Um, and I did uh, financially and mentally and emotionally and here we are, uh, seven months from getting married. So, yeah. uh, yeah, it all, it all, it all worked out, but, uh, yeah, it all, it all worked out for the best. A lot of bullshit ahead of time, a lot of bullshit in between, but everything worked out for, yeah. for the best. It's like, uh, the end of the Sh uh, Shawshank Redemption. You had to swim through a river of shit. I don't know if it was quite that bad. Like, yeah, I got arrested and I spent 15, 15 hours in county jail, but I didn't have to swim through any shit. So uh, I don't know if it was quite that bad. Metaphorical shit. Metaphorical shit. I had to swim through a river of metaphorical shit. Yes. It's interesting how uh, we haven't done this podcast in six years, uh, but there are some similarities in things that we've gone through. And I'm sure we'll see that when we do your episode oh, yeah. as well. It's just weird. Because, uh, uh, like, at least me and you, we still talked every once in a while, mm -hmm. but definitely not as much as we had prior. Mm -hmm. And then me and Trevor have rarely ever talked on a regular basis. Yeah, I, I think the, the only times we interacted outside of that podcast and outside of the time that you guys were running that and I was doing my own thing was uh, posts on Facebook about, like, n the nerdiest shit. Yeah. And then, other than that... We, kind of, we would see each other sometimes, like if me if we were doing something with Austin yeah. or stuff like that. But and every once in a while, there would be talks about like, "Hey, we should have a podcast." And then it would be like, "Uh, I'm busy." Yeah. And then I remember like how or much... or it would be like, "Yeah, we should do that." And then crickets. Yep. I would get really, really excited about it and then remember like how much work it was. Oh, wait, and then get, life. Yeah, and then get really, really excited about it. And then I'm like, ah, I can't, I'm depressed. Um, but yeah, so I had to, A, I wanted to get a place where we could record um, and moving into a, an actual home and not an apartment uh, certainly helped. But yeah, and then like our, our schedules aligned and... I quit the job at the dealership, so I wasn't working every weekend anymore and actually had some time to record. And uh, yeah, so everything just kind of worked out where we can start doing this again. And, it I, is, and I'm glad we did. It is kind of yeah. funny how the the life of the podcast is predicated on your avail availability. Because <laughs> when, when we quit doing it the first time, me and Aaron were talking for like a month about trying to keep it going and then nothing came out of it. Yeah. 
And then every time that me and Trevor and you have ever talked online about any of this, it's always been like, Austin, we should fucking record a podcast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm kind of glad we didn't try harder, like earlier, like trying to pitch any of these podcast ideas because I don't think it would have worked. And I, don't... well, we've, we've all done a lot of growing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we're not the, none of us, I don't think, are the same people we were six years ago. No. I, that's why I wanted to do these these podcasts, especially for the people – like there was a very small group of people that listened to the old podcast that are still listening to the new podcast. What's up, Jeanette? Hi. Miss you. Um, Justin. What's up? Justin. Uh, Roy. Um, yeah. I all of our anybody. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> all, of our, all of our faithfuls. But that's the whole reason I wanted to do these three episodes, uh, episode two, three, and four, because I wanted – I wanted the people to that listen to our episodes six years ago see how much it's changed because I think it was just a lot of. I, I think the the older version of this podcast is more hyperactive. Oh, it was it was ADD central. It yeah. was me not I being mean, able to sit still. Yeah, I'm yelling all the fucking time for no fucking reason. The thing I did like, and I hope that there's. I don't want it to be as chaotic as it it was, mm -hmm. um, but at the same time there were. It was so unpolished that some of the, my favorite moments of the podcast are things that were not supposed to happen. Like um, the one time that Aaron grabbed four individual Ren Fair <laughs> coffee cups at the same time, like like back to back to back, shit like that. I'm like, can't use that one. Yeah, can't use that one. Uh, can't use that like one. Jeanette laughing in the background. Just like some of the unpolished things were what made it, like what gave it its its character, in my mm -hmm. opinion. Um, obviously, we've done a lot of growing. Obviously, I think that the uh, uh, with Morgan, especially, and then um, Zach's episode that you guys will hear in, in a couple weeks, where he talks about not only his travels and all of the silly stuff, but he actually breaks down like the emotional side of things and wanting to one day settle down and like, and not really knowing how to do that. Yeah. And loving the opportunity to travel and things like that, but also realizing being self-aware of the fact that like, if I keep this mindset of traveling, like I'm, I'm not going to be able to start a family. I'm not going to have my friends close. I can't go out and celebrate a birthday party, things like that. Like, I think those are the conversations that I enjoy now because it's things that I've definitely thought about, um, definitely where my head's at. And so I think that overall the show is probably a more serious than it was six years ago. Um, I don't think that everything will be that way though. No, it's, it's, no, no. Because right now we have a plan. We have a plan of what we want to do, but yeah. after episode five, we have interviews that we're going to do, but there's going to be episodes in between where we don't yeah, have yeah. a plan. Where we just bullshit, and then it's going to get silly. Anything else that you guys want to talk about? Any any life lessons? Any moral of the story before we wrap this one up? No, I think we're, we're pretty set on what we want to do. Glad you're doing better. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Glad it all led to this. Yeah. Back to me getting married or the podcast? Everything. All right. Yeah. All right. Why does it have to be one thing? It doesn't. There you go. Why not both? Little Mexican girl in the taco commercial. Uh, wasn't she Asian? 